Is the master chief a traitor? Is he gonna die? Who's this dude that just shot him? What are you talking about? He didn't shoot him. The master chief was gonna shoot him. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what are you guys doing to Halo? <laughs> um, that's the point. That's the point. You actually want to get to the point where the player goes, well, wait a minute, I've been this character for three games. They can't possibly kill me. Cortana's our concern now, sir. Is it more satisfying as a player to kill Guilty Spark yourself or to see the Chief do it in cinematic? But as soon as you make that decision, you're taking that action away from the player. Now Master Chief begins a deeply personal journey, questioning authority and searching for the truth. There's no sense of heroic action if there's no real consequences. Do it. Is Miranda coming across as strong enough? Now. Does the Arbiter have enough vengeance built up in him to really push that sword into truth? You must be silenced. <laughs> The journey is the important part. The growth is the important part. And so really, where does he still need to go as, as a human? That became the key to not just the story of Halo 4, but the entire trilogy. You need to constantly remind players of what they're missing, that this thing is something worth going after. But if it was just a straight, now go find her, here's a map, people wouldn't care. Chief, it's not safe. Master Chief is human. He's not a machine, he's not a set of armor with a big weapon. He's a human with resilience. The success of the story is we didn't pump a lot of time into figuring out who the Master Chief was and why he was a ghost in the shell. We thought he is a husk. He's a big green suit of armor that you move around. There's something good about having the Master Chief essentially be a blank slate. That helps each individual person connect to the character. From the art process, storytelling is just about engaging the player. You don't have to answer any questions. You don't have to take them through a lot of loops of feeling. The player is engaged. I think you've got the start. To give the brutes more depth, they need to have a history too. So I look at the brutes. I try to imagine what their home world is like. Maybe they're from a place where they hammer ore and there's lava and magnetism. And I say, okay, well, how do I build a magnetized metallic lawnmower that's fun to drive and shoot people with. You think about basic combat encounter design, a lot of the challenges designers face is how to introduce enemies. What would a Promethean do if it could bend time, space, form, matter? Knights can phase in out of anywhere. He's able to go where he needs to at any time, which is something the Covenant can't do. Here are the brand new hooks to the sandbox. The game to be interesting, like the, the guys you're playing against have to be fun to play. Does the profile of the character create an interesting look from afar? Is it fun to shoot at him when he runs around? Do you see his limbs moving up and down because there's things jutting him from the sides? The moment where all the Promethean effects really started to click the most was when we started showing the dissolve whenever you kill a knight. That was really when we started to feel, yes, this is something cool, this is something unique, and something that we haven't really seen before. You can have all the great graphics and all the different characters and lots of different weapons with amazing effects, but if you don't nail that 30 seconds, you're not gonna have a great game. The sandbox is all of the characters, and weapons, and vehicles in the game, and how they interact with each other through damage and AI and the player control. <laughs> The art direction specifically for Halo 4 isn't about creating an emotional tone for Halo 4, it's about creating an emotional tone for every single moment and experience that the player needs to understand. This is gorgeous, but this is an absolutely awful space to fight bad guys in. Tell them to drop everything and yeah. recraft this. This space needs to be fun before it's pretty. Every mission has its own feeling and you don't just get that sense of oh, I'm going from room to room and just killing more guys. We tried coming up with this perfect mix of stuff that was still relatable. You would still identify a weapon as a rifle or a shotgun or a submachine gun, even though they're almost magical. It was really getting hard to add new weapons because balancing 40 weapons, you're gonna feel like you have a weapon that is a clone of another. So the direction that we took is we added a new set of really, really powerful weapons that you don't really keep for a long time. The Forerunner Scattershot was probably the first one where we really nailed the design on it. Everybody loves the hinge action shotgun. The basic design for a weapon needs to be fun to shoot and fun to be shot at. Weapon skins. People love Magnum skins. People love AR skins because of the uh, because of the arena starts. Yeah. 
we, we see a very clear, clear need there. We also have ways for them to paint different parts of the water uh, parameters. And then the engineer looks at it and goes, oh wow, I never thought you'd be doing something like that with my system. But that's so cool looking that I want to make a better system for you to do that. It's pretty obvious to us when, when we start working on these maps that they have to be fun for the hundredth and the, the two hundredth and the thousandth time. We knew we wanted to expand the audience as far as we could, but still satisfy the core as much as possible. We had to break everything down to line by line evaluation of our current scripts and redefine that core loop to not make it like Halo 2 or like Halo 3 or something in the middle, but make it Call of Duty Black Ops 3. We know like there are people that love Sprint and there are people that just feel like Sprint has no place in Halo. And so for us, it was about how do we balance that? How do we counter that? Every weapon now has a zoom in. Holographic image comes up, it's all slick. It helps me with some types of weapons, especially rapid fire weapons in my case. You have a situation which is very common. Two guys get into a fight. Is there a way to mix that up? Say you start getting hit by a battle rifle from behind. Let's say you have a bubble shield, you drop it, all of a sudden you're completely shielded from this guy who's firing on you. Or you have a trip mine and you realize a warthog is barreling towards you. You deploy the trip mine at the last second. And yes, you die, but you take out those damn bastards that just ran you over. Competition. Competition. Competitive as possible. Very competitive. Really competitive. 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 Oh, you're opening up a pack. It's animating. Someone makes sound effects. <laughs> Mongoose, Needler, Ghost, Fuel Rock Cannon. Yes. All the details are I in. I love it. That's uh, fantastic. All of the wiring in the house runs Thanks. into one room and into a pair of switches and then goes out again. Oh, that's oh, that's playing offense. Oh my God. What it comes down to is getting together with people, being able to yell at them, being able to like reflect on the gameplay afterwards. <laughs> Jump up and scream and throw your controller down. And you hate it, but you love it, and you gotta play again. <laughs> Proximity voice. You can get close to somebody in a game and talk to them and only that person can hear you. It was really amazing to get online for the first time when there were a bunch of people online and just press the button that said, I want to play, go find me some other people that want to play and choose a game type that's pretty cool and just stick me in it as fast as you can. And to have that process happen in like five seconds. Halo 2 Anniversary will contain the original Halo 2 multiplayer exactly as it shipped 10 years ago. Take the things that we love about the Halo scores that have come before and try to put that into it, but then also add in the things that really excite us so we create something that's really honest. As intimidating it is to follow Marty's scores, There's always a point like when I'm all by myself composing, and this just happened like within the last 24 hours, where I'm thinking, is this anything? Is this idea gonna be interesting to anybody? You have these whole series of self-doubts. And then there comes a point where I get over the hump. Like I, I add some instrument or I play some melody and it's like, oh, oh, okay. That's what this was meant to be. Marty's pretty amazing. Marty makes, uh... Pretty much everything you do twice is good, and that makes me really angry because he's just about the only individual who has that level of contribution to the team. But I would never say that to him. There it is. Huh? Something. Bet you can't stick it. Bet you can't stick it. Oh, you're on. What was that? A little something, something for the fans. I like that. That was that's, I've that's seen for that. the. Uh, the little uh, glowy. That's for the really grenade. hardcore, like German press core. <laughs> Let's move. Take him out. The master chief is called, but you, your passage is denied. Epic worlds, epic battles, epic scale. This is the biggest and most ambitious Halo campaign yet. What you're about to see 
is a giant leap for Halo multiplayer, and it's playable here at E3. Here we are. Halo 5 has arrived. After E3, instead of being able to jump into all of our levels and go right into it, we're still trying to figure out where we're going and what the quality bar is going to be. Because right now, the game is not fun. We are the most cynical people. Like, we are the jaded crowd who, if a game doesn't entertain us in five minutes, we stop playing it. As we design these things, we put together the best plan. I look at the changes that we're making, and it really feels like we're making a sequel to Halo 3. And that's exactly what we're setting out to do. If you somehow believe that what you're doing is the greatest thing ever all the time, it's absolutely not going to be the greatest thing ever. We write the first draft of the script, but it's not great. I didn't see any shape to the story. Nothing happy, nothing sad, nothing intense. I'm sitting here day in and day out working on the cinematics. And every scene that I make, there's this voice in the back of my head saying, what is keeping the player from skipping this? What's keeping the player from hitting a button and just going right to the end? Ultimately, it's involving the player and making the player really feel that they're in this story. You want to establish that this is something a little bit more important. The story that we're trying to tell has higher stakes. Whether we can do that, we won't know until that thing's in people's hands and they're playing. This is Spartan 117. Can anyone hear me? Over. Well, we had such a great ending to Halo 2 where Master Chief said, I want to finish the fight. Master Chief, do you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. We want this to be the Return of the King. We want this to be the final chapter in an epic trilogy. This is the end of our trilogy. This is going to be the end of the story. This is going to be the end of the fight. <laughs>